Welcome back to another episode of Jamie and Julia. I have found myself in an unintentionally frightening predicament. It's terrifying. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. I'm cooking out of this one today, volume one. And the recipe is this, small roast chicken with chicken liver canapé and mushrooms. Just to round out the dish, make this a complete meal, I'm gonna add in some sauteed potatoes, free of charge. Now this is one of the classic French recipes for serving small roast birds. This freaking book is so... If you don't have a small chicken, you know what you can use? A pigeon, a partridge, a quail, or a dove. I don't have a small chicken, so I've opted for the pigeon but it's also a very tiny pigeon. It's a baby pigeon. It's called a squab. Oh, this sounds awful, I know. But this is what we're cooking with today, a squab. And because I live in New York, it's really easy just to order specialty items like this and have them delivered right to my door. So that's what I did. This just arrived, so it's still like, still processing the whole situation. But the squab is in the house. I don't wanna get into it right now. More on that later. Let's start with the mushrooms. I got mushrooms here, three quarters of a pound, 340 grams. Um, you know what? I washed them. And, I, and I'm proud of it. So I just gotta trim them. So with the large mushrooms, I gotta quarter them. With the small ones, I just leave whole. Saute these mushrooms up in the butter for five to six minutes. half a tablespoon of chopped shallot and a small clove of garlic, mashed. Cover, turn up the heat moderately. Two more minutes. These should be, those are done. I don't need these, I don't need to worry about those until the very end now. Okay, so I got these itty bitty baby potatoes right here. Film the bottom of the pan with clarified butter. Make sure it's hot, but not browned. Potatoes go in, roll them around. So I gotta let them cook on the first side for two minutes. Don't move them, just leave them like that. And then after two minutes, roll them around to the other side, or whatever side they so happen to land on. I continue what I'm doing, like every two minutes flipping them around, so that this like thick, so that this protective skin like forms on the outside of the potatoes. After a total of like four to five minutes just doing that, I sprinkle them with salt, roll them around, then I cover them, turn the heat down to low. Cook those like this for 15 minutes. And then of course you gotta shake them every few minutes. Time has come, <laughs> the time has come. Uh, I was trying to delay this as much as I could, but just time catches up with you. This right here is my whole squab the tiny little pigeon that uh, I purchased from an Italian butcher shop. What I specifically ordered from this place was a whole squab. And you're probably wondering like, what the hell? Or why are you making this out of such a big deal? So I was expecting kind of like, you know, when you buy a chicken from a grocery store and it comes a certain way that you've come to expect and it's not too frightening, right? You see that? You see that? Anyone that's not interested in seeing what's about to happen next, um, you can fast forward to this part of the video. You avoid this whole situation. Everyone else wants to be here, right? Good. Proceeding. Squab is still very much a squab. I'm so sorry. That still has the legs. Please, please tell me that this thing has been gutted and everything, right? There's nothing on the inside. Oh, thank God. Nothing on the inside. This is my first decapitation. This part, right? You keep this on. This right here is something I can manage. Well, just a second. <laughs> Probably made that into a bigger thing than it actually was. But, I mean, I was frightened. The recipe mentions the bird last but I couldn't really proceed anymore without getting rid of that head. Ugh. Oh, that's rancid. This is chicken livers. When were these supposed to be sold by? 
today. Oh, it smells like f farts. I need one. Oh, this is rancid. It is gross. That, ch that one chicken looked like it was a smoker. When I purchased this, I just thought I was just buying a small thing of chicken liver. It ends up being this big tub here. Trim the livers, cutting off any black or greenish spots. Put the lid on this chicken liver. Did not open this for another thousand years. Whew. It wasn't me. Mind you that this recipe is for six people, so I should be using six chicken livers. I only got the one. This is pork fat right here. This is pork fat. Like half a tablespoon of pork fat. There you go, in here. Chop very finely, almost into the puree with the pork fat in it. Because the pork fat was in the fridge, it's having a tough time blending into the liver. This is just turning into a murder scene right now. It's not lost on me how unappetizing this looks. I mean, look at this. Need a bowl. Thank you. This awesomeness can go into the... Okay, in with this stuff here, I need a little pepper, a little salt, probably a little more than usual just because this thing looks terrifying. A tablespoon of Madeira wine, but I need to divide that in six. Whatever the hell that is. I'm just gonna add just a little bit. Just a little. Yeah, that's probably too much. So delicious. Okay, just put that thing aside for a second. I need a slice of white bread. So I didn't cheap out on the bread today. I went all out. This is a $6 loaf of bread. Cut off the crust, made this into a two by three rectangle. Pardon me, this needed to be two by three and a half inches. So I need a frying pan, excuse me. Bread goes into the clarified butter and I gotta saute each side just lightly. I'm just gonna do a backup little piece just in case I need this. Yeah, I'm liking that. And then spread the liver mixture onto the bread. Doesn't that look lovely? Looks like grape jelly on toast, doesn't it? I'm just gonna get this out of my sight can't stand the sight of it right now. I'll reserve judgment of how it tastes when the time comes though. Nice strip of bacon here that I'm gonna add into some simmering water and for 10 minutes. In the cavity of the bird, I'm adding in like diced up shallot. Some tarragon, use my judgment, that's cool. Pepper. Did I need pepper? She says no pepper. I like pepper anyway. And then some salt. Add this all into the cavity. The sh hokey pokey, shake it all about. And then a good healthy amount of butter, of course. She says around half an ounce for one bird, right? No, that'd be a quarter ounce. Nah, this is probably good. Into the cavity as well. Just kinda, I'll just rub it around. Now what? Trust the bird. All right, so I gotta tie this guy up. It's a trussing needle. I've never done this with a needle before, but I'm gonna give it a try. Thrust the needle through the lower part of the carcass, come back over one drumstick, and through the tip of the breast bone. Oh, see? And then over the second drumstick. Push the needle through the second part, the drumstick. So through here. Turn the bird on its breast, and then fold the wings akimbo. My hands are all poultry-like. I can't find, I can't really figure out what akimbo is right now. My hands are all covered. I have a feeling akimbo is just this, you know? Thread the needle through one wing, catch the neck, and through the other wing. Pull the needle out through the other wing, draw the string tight. So I just feel like the legs need to be kind of tied up too. I, she doesn't really mention that, did she? She may have, I don't think she did though. There, they're tied up. Everything is trussed, ready to rock and roll. Dry the poor old squab off. Rub with butter. All over, spare no expense. Retrieve the bacon. Uh, the bacon, rinse and dry the bacon, okay. Blanched bacon in half crosswise. It already fell apart. <laughs> Tie two strips over the breast in the thigh. Tie two strips over the breast. Okay, two strips, one breast, two breast. And then the thigh and the thigh. I gotta tie that around. 
bird goes into the cast iron. I'm gonna use the cast iron skillet for this. Okay, let's go into the middle rack. She says cook this chicken for 30 to 40 minutes. I'm learning here that my oven is much hotter than the oven she was using in this book. So I'm just gonna opt for around 30 minutes and I'll check it there. 30 minutes. Since I'm using a pigeon, it may be served slightly underdone. That's when the juices run a very pale rose rather than a clear yellow. And that's only because I'm using a squab. If I was using a chicken, that has gotta be done. Every five to seven minutes, baste and turn the bird. With some butter and oil, baste it. The squab is finito. Remove the trussing. Sprinkle the bird with some salt. Leave the bacon on, I guess. Uh, okay. Transfer the bird to a separate dish. And then this goes into a turned off oven with the door ajar. Ajar. I need to remove all but a tablespoon of this fat. Chop up half a shallot. Okay, the roasting pan, get the heat on that. Shallot goes in. After a minute, I'm gonna add in my beef stock. It's like 150 milliliters. And I'm gonna throw in a couple splashes of that Madeira wine for good measure. Boil that down. Reduce to one quarter pint. Some more salt. Turn the heat off. You let that cool for a second. Okay, this sauce can hang out there. For so I need to reheat the mushrooms and the potatoes. So to do that, I add a little butter in with the mushrooms, a little salt, pepper. Get that going for two minutes. Same with the potatoes, they're already on. Ow, ow, why did I grab that? So this is the liver canapé. And remember this? What I'm gonna do is turn the broiler on, on like some sort of random dish upside down. Broil the top of that until it's sizzling. Butter into my um, sauce, my jus. I need to um, gently swirl it in. Swirl the butter. Okay, sauce is ready. Mushrooms are ready. Potatoes are ready. The squab is ready. This liver thing, gotta be ready. I need two gloves for this one. I hope that liver is cooked. Okay, let's get this onto my plate. Million dollar question with the squab is, should I remove the bacon? I'm not sure. I'll leave it off. Squab goes on top of the canopy. Get some mushrooms on the plate. The potatoes, decorate with some parsley. A little like that? I don't know. I don't know how to do the parsley. I think that looks nice like that. Order up! Don't know what to expect. Never had um, squab before. Okay, is it like, it's kind of like a game bird? What is the point of this? There's no meat, there we go. It's difficult to even sum up what I'm trying. This bird is like. I feel like an animal right now. Tarragon's coming through nicely. So is the butter. It's very gamey. I mentioned that. I had like two small bites. I can't tell if it was cooked properly or if it was overcooked because there was just not enough to assess. This thing was expensive too. This was like 20 bucks for this little squab. Surprisingly, the liver canapé is probably the highlight of this dish. I didn't see that coming. You know, it's very rich and it's like earthy or something. I don't know if it is earthy, but there's something I have to address with this recipe. It was meant for six and kind of cutting it down for moi. I always find that kind of challenging to do. Especially when a recipe like this has so much like butter in it. So to me, this plate is just butter with like a side of everything else. That's squab for you. I guess it's just, a, maybe it's just a bit too gourmet for me. Not enough bang for my buck, but there you have it. It's just one of those days, honestly, where just not everything turned out the way I was expecting. And you know, could be some user errors along the way. Could be something with the book. I don't know, I'm not pointing fingers and I'm over it. I hope you are too, but I still hope you enjoyed the episode. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. New on my Patreon this week, I am hosting a Q&A for my patrons only. You gotta subscribe to my Patreon. It's linked right here or also in the description. I'll see you there, maybe. <laughs>